Some of my favorite books to read are stories of real men who have gone through incredibly difficult situations and just faced down the difficulty like a badass. So today I want to give you three books that are just fit that bill perfectly and that will inspire you the next time you face a really difficult situation in your life. The first one is Endurance by Alfred Lansing. I've mentioned this book before, but it is one of my favorite books ever. It is about Ernest Shackleton's journey to the South Pole and the endurance getting stuck and the men on board having to abandon the ship and then trek their way back across the Antarctic and try to get back to civilization. And this book is crazy when you read about what these guys went through. We get out here in our modern day times and we go outside and it's 40 degrees and we don't have a sweatshirt and we're like, oh, I'm cold. I want to go inside, you know? And these guys are out here in freaking like sub 30 degree temperatures and sopping wet from the ocean in lifeboats and still having to figure out how to survive in this thing. And so the leadership principles of Shackleton and how he kept his men alive combined with just the the unfathomable amount of difficulty that they went through in order to survive and the fact that he didn't lose any men from the crew one like he didn't as the leader but then two they all somehow also managed to not just keel over and die um it's just this story is from a time when men were so much harder than we are today and reading this book i listened to it on audio Several years ago, I bought myself a copy recently and I'm about to reread it again because it just, every time I realize what a freaking wuss I'm being, <laughs> I think of this book again and just get a massive kick in the pants to not be you, you have to be better than you. <laughs> so that's the first one, one of my favorites of all time. I highly, highly recommend Endurance by Alfred Lansing. The next one is called Jim Bridger, Mountain Man, and it's a biography by Stanley Vestal. Jim Bridger is just one of the most towering figures among the mountain men who helped settle the West, right? And the fascinating thing about the mountain men, one, is this kind of dichotomy of how they lived in between the white settlers who were coming in, but also they were kind of more like the Indians that were being pushed out in front of the the westward expansion and so there's this the incredible tension between coming from civilization but also being so far out of civilization for so long that they're incredibly uncivilized and so there's a whole difficult piece of all that and then just the stuff that they went through jim bridger one of the things that sticks out for me i haven't read this book in i don't even know how many years it's been a long time but one of the stories that will always stick with me of this was he got shot by an indian and he had he got shot in his lower back and he had a uh, the arrowhead, they ended up breaking off the arrow and they just had to leave the arrowhead in at the moment. And then he just ends up leaving it in. And so then for like two years, he goes around with this arrowhead in his back, like pinching right up against his spine until finally there's this one day that they're like, all right, like we got to get it out. He's like, oh, it's screwing with me too bad and whatever. And they go, they cut him open and they pull it out. And it's this three and a half inch like curved at the end arrowhead that got all jacked up that they're just like ripping out of his back that this dude has walked around with for, I'm pretty sure it was like two years or something like that, just sticking in his back and like screwing with his spine, you know? And, uh, and like, I think of that story. I'm like, I, I get like, you know, a bug bite and I'm like, oh, this bug bite like really hurts this morning. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like literally he walked around with a three and a half inch arrowhead. Suck it up be tougher. So yeah, highly recommend this one. Jim Bridger, Mountain Man by Stanley Vestal. Really, really great. So then the last one that I want to talk about is Sergeant York and the Great War. This one, this particular edition has a bunch of pictures and everything in it. If you don't know the story of Sergeant York, Sergeant York was a conscientious, conscientious objector to the war in World War I and was refusing to go over and fight because he believed <clears throat> that it was anti-biblical and he couldn't reconcile passages in the Bible talking about turning the other cheek, talking about all this stuff. Um, he couldn't reconcile them with 
war. And so it's, it's the story of his journey through that and finally coming to a place and an understanding where, yes, all those passages do apply, but there's also these passages and the, the big one for him ended up being a revelation on the passage of blessed are the peacemakers. And there was a, a reverend who was explaining to him like, we're, we're not going over here to start this thing. We're going over here to help bring peace to these countries. So it's his journey through wrestling with what the Bible says and talks about with in, in relation to killing and in relation to military stuff and fighting and all, and all this stuff. And so it's super, super interesting to walk through his journey of understanding of what that looks like and how should a Christian man approach violence right? And how should we be thinking about violence and how do we balance the Old Testament and the New Testament with a proper view of violence in the fallen world that we live in on this side of heaven, right? And so eventually it goes to him signing up and him going over and serving. And the the incredible thing about his story is basically it, it culminates in this one part where long story short, he essentially surrounds and captures 132 Germans by himself, <laughs> basically. Um, and, and just incredible, incredible story of this man who was reluctant to come and fight in the war and then let God work on his heart to change his heart and then went and served and then did his best and brought his skills as, as a hunter and a woodsman and all this other stuff and brought them to bear in this war and ended up saving a ton of his guys on this day and ended up treating the prisoners that he got with equanimity and, uh, and respect and all this stuff. And so just absolutely incredible story and just a man to look up to a godly man who did his best to live well in the world and in the challenges of his time, right? So super great example there, Sergeant York and the Great War. I'm telling you guys, pick them up, read them. You will not regret getting any of these books. They are some of my favorites and they are some of the ones that I reference. Again, just in my head, when I'm in these difficult situations, these are the stories that pop back into my head. Like think about what the guys went through on the endurance. Think about Jim Bridger walking around with a three inch arrowhead in his back for years. Think about uh, Sergeant York and his willingness to not avoid the hard internal issue and the, and, the, and the difficult thing that he was struggling with, trying to make up his mind about what does the Bible say about this thing, but delving into it. And then once it changed and, and then he went to war doing his best at war and embracing like, yes, like I changed, this is my mindset. Now I'm gonna go do the best that I can over here. Like I say, they give you that vision of who you can be and, and what you can respond like in similar situations in your life. So let me know if you've read any of these. Um, I kind of tried to pick some pretty obscure ones uh, because I really like having books that you probably haven't heard of before. Let me know if you read them. They're great. I think you will love them too. Uh, I think that's all I got. Like, subscribe, all the things. I'll see you in the next video.